Hello, my name is Louise Mpluski and I'm going to present this short e-lecture on EN 1990, which is to do with loading. So, this presentation is very short and I'm going to run through the following. So, a brief introduction to EN 1990, then combinations of actions, and then I'll talk about ultimate and serviceability limit states. EN 1990 covers the basis of structural design and you'll need to use it in conjunction with the other Eurocodes. So, for this series of lectures, we'll be referring to Eurocode 3. So to get the safety factors, that is, the partial factors and combination factors for ultimate and serviceability limit state verifications, then we need to refer to EN 1990. Now, ultimate limit states are to do with the failure of the structure. New ULS checks are needed to verify that the building is safe. In EN 1990, there are four ULS checks. So checks for static equilibrium, strength buckling, failure of excessive deformation of ground, and fatigue failure. And we also need to consider serviceability limit states. So those relating to the appearance and functioning of the structure. So here I'm going to talk about actions, and this might sound new to you, but it's the same as loads. And we have permanent and variable actions, so dead and live loads, which you might be more familiar with. And we also have accidental actions. Now variable actions can be leading or non-leading, and below you can see the characteristic variable action is represented by QK, combination value by psi not QK. And the frequent value by psi 1 qk and the quasi permanent value by psi 2 qk. So you notice these psi factors, on the, and on the next slide, I'll show you where you can get those. So these psi terms are combination factors, and we can get these psi factors from the UK National Annex. In this slide, I have an extract from table NAA11, and that's from the National Annex. And we have the different psi factors for different loading situations. So you might notice where there's higher loading. And the combination factors are slightly larger. If we look at category A, which is for domestic and residential areas, psi naught is 0.7, psi 1 is 0.5, and psi 3 is 0.3. Now, when we need to consider combinations of actions, there are two options that we have. The first option is to use equation 610. Alternatively, we can use the less favourable result of equations 610A and 610B. So you'll see these equations on the next few slides. So here we have the first option. And this is equation 610. So we have the permanent load factor gamma, gamma g times the permanent action gk plus the pre-stress plus the leading variable action times the partial factor gamma q. And then the leading variable action, I should just point out, is the one which creates the most unfavorable effect. And sometimes when it's not obvious, we need to consider each variable in turn. And then at the end here, we have any other variable actions times the partial factor gamma q times the combination factor psi naught. So that's equation 610 and you might note I've written down the partial factors are 1.35 and 1.5. These are listed later on in the presentation. So using British standards you would have been using 1.4 and 1.6 so that's just an important change that you should note. Now here's the second option that we have. Um, we have equation 610a and 610b and we need to take the least favourable of these two. So equation 610a is similar to 610 except that we have an extra combination factor applied to the leading variable action. At the bottom is equation 610b and it's the same as equation 610 except that we have this term psi which is a reduction factor and the value of that is taken from the national annex as 0.925. So I've briefly mentioned these partial safety factors. So for unfavourable actions, the partial factor for permanent actions, gamma g, is 1.35. And for variable actions, gamma q is 1.5. Now for favourable actions, um, for permanent actions, the factor is 1. And for variable actions, the factor is 0. So here we have a variable floor load in a residential building and a variable wind load. So from table NA, A11, the psi naught factors for a floor in a residential area are 0 0.7 and for a wind load, 0 0.5. So first of all, we have option one. So we're going to be using equation 610. So we have the partial safety factor for the permanent load in ULS, gamma g, and that's 1.35. The partial factor for the leading variable action, gamma q, and that's 1.5 and for the other, other variable actions we need to multiply the partial safety factor by the psi naught combination factor. So if we take the floor as the leading variable load we need to multiply the other variable loads um, which would be the wind load by the wind load psi factor which is 
So we get 1.35 times the permanent action plus the pre-stress plus 1.5 times the leading variable load, which is the floor load, plus 0.75 times other other variable load, which is the wind load. Now on the other hand, if we took the wind as the leading variable load, then we would multiply the other variable loads by the side factor for the floor, which is 0.7. So then in that case we get 1.35 times the permanent action plus the pre-stress plus 1.5 times the leading variable load which is the wind load plus 1.05 times the other variable load which is the floor load. So that's how we use equation 610 and next I'll go through equation 610a and 610b. So if we want to use the second option we have to check um, both equations 610a and 610b. So here's a, here is equation 610a. So again, if we have the partial factor gamma g for permanent action, so that's 1.35, and here both the leading and other variable loads um, are multiplied by psi naught and gamma q factors. So um, for the floor load, that is 1.5 times 0.7, and for the wind load, that is 1.5 times 0.5. We get 1.35 times the permanent action plus the pre-stress plus 1.05 times the floor load plus 0.75 times the wind load. And here's equation 610b, and this is a bit more complicated because we don't know what the leading variable is, so we need to consider all situations. So first of all, um, we're checking the flow load as the leading variable load. So the other variable load is the wind load then. So we use a side factor of 0.5. We also need to multiply by um, gamma g partial factor by um, psi, which is 0.925. So in that case, we get 1.25 times the permanent action plus the pre-stress plus 1.5 times the leading variable load, which is the floor load, plus 0.75 times the other, the other variable load, which is the wind load. And on the next slide, we'll consider two other possible situations. Now, if we take the wind as the variable, uh, the leading variable load, we get 1.25 times the permanent action plus 1.5 times the leading variable load, which is the wind load plus 1.05 times the other variable load, which is the floor load. Now, if we assume that there is no leading variable, then we treat both the floor and the wind loads as other variable loads. So we multiply both by sine naught factors. So we get 1.25 times the permanent action, plus 1.05 times the floor load, plus 1.75 times the wind load. Now, you can use either equation 610 or the lesser of 610a and 610b so here's the summary of the factors worked out over the last few slides. So you'll see the pattern that the leading variable actions will have higher factors compared to the other variable actions. So again, this is just a summary of the factors worked out in tabular form. So here we have the factors for equation 610b. So you need to consider all possible combinations. I just want to show you the combinations used in serviceability limit state. So equations 614b, 615b and 616b. So they are for characteristic combinations, frequent combinations and quasi-permanent combinations. And you can use, use those equations in a similar way to equations 610, 610a and 610b. But you will be using the serviceability limit state partial factors. So next we have an example showing how to use equations 610, 610a and 610b. So here we have a roof, the following loads, so a permanent load of 1 kN per meter squared, and then variable action, so the imposed load is 0.5 kN per meter squared, wind uplift is 1.25 kN per meter squared, wind download is 0.4 kN per meter squared, and the snow load is 0.6 kN per meter squared. So we need to work out the most critical combination, and we're going to go through um, the two options. So first we're going to use equation 610, and then we will take the least favourable result from equation 610a and 610b. So we're going to need to do the values of the partial factors and we need to sign out. So from table A11 in the UK National Annex we get those values. So 0.7 for the roof and 0.5 for the snow and wind, wind loads. So here's the first option, so equation 610. And for the purpose of this example we'll ignore the pre-stress term. So we have uh, the first load combination, so the permanent load and the imposed load. As the leading variable action. So we put on our factors and our load values and we get uh, 2.1 kilonewtons per meter squared and the next combination is the permanent load and the snow load as the leading variable action and that works out slightly higher at 2.25 kilonewtons per meter squared. Now the third combination then so we have the permanent 
and then the snow is a leading variable action and also um, the wind download. So for the wind download we need to use the psi naught term and for the wind that's equal to 0.5 so that reduces the wind factor from 1.5 to 0.75 so again putting in the factors on the load values we get 2.55 kilonewtons per meter square squared which is the highest so far. Now the fourth combination is a uh, permanent and the wind download as the leading variable action and then the snow load and that works out as 2.4 kilonewtons per meter squared. Now as well as um, the downloads on the roof we have the wind upload so we also need to consider that and that's quite simple so that works out as 0.88 kilonewtons per meter squared. So that was equation 610 and that's the first option that we can use and next I'll go through um, equation 610a. So I'll go through the same load combinations as before, except this time I'll be using equation 610a. So the results will be slightly different because uh, we have to multiply the leading variable by the sine naught factor as well. So load combination 1 works out as 1.88 kN per meter squared, and combination 2 is 1.8 kN per meter squared. Um, load combination 3 works out as 2.1 kN per meter squared, and load combination 4 is 2.1 kN per meter squared. And just like before, we need to consider the uplift. So that works out as 0 0.06 kilonewtons per meter squared using equation 610a. So now we've finished using uh, 610a, but we also need to check 610b as well, and then take the least favorable result of the two. So here, for load combination one, we get two kilonewtons per meter squared. For load combination two, we get 2.15 kilonewtons per meter squared. Um, for load combination 3, we get 2.45 kilonewtons per meter squared, and for load combination 4, we get 2 kilonewtons per meter squared. And again, we'll just need to check the uplift. So for that combination, we get a value of 0.95 kilonewtons per meter squared. So here is just a summary um, showing you the results from using the different equations. And you can see that the most critical combination is combination 3. So remember, we could use either option. Uh, either option 1 which uses equation 610 or we could use option 2 which takes the least favourable results from equations 610a and 610b. So for this example we would use either 2.55 or 2.45 and that would just depend on whichever option we, did, we decided to use. So that just concludes um, this brief introduction to EAM 1990. So thank you for listening.